What's happening guys? Happy Wednesday. But if you're watching live on YouTube, happy Tuesday and welcome to the Dynasty War Zone. The People's Dynasty Podcast are on today's show. Me and my co-host Jerry, we are going to take just a little break, a small just a little break. We're going to we're going to recharge our rookie batteries if you will. This one's called the No Rookies Required News Super Show. And I just uh, reference my co-host, you know him better as the man of the hour and the man with the power. He is Jerry Sinclair. Jerry, man, how you been? I have been good. Um, I don't know how Indiana is faring right now, but I've got snow on April 20th, which is a bunch of horse shit, if I could say so myself. Uh, I'm excited to talk football with you and not rookies, because let's be honest, in like 10 days, it's all anybody's ever going to talk about. So we might as well get a little bit of a break before we just have to dive down deep into it. Yeah, you know, g- gave the the guest uh, a, a week off. Uh, I'm going to read a review uh, that pertains to one of our guest appearances recently. But uh, yeah, man, um, if I have to hear one more Devonta Smith, Trevor Lawrence, Najee Harris take, I'm probably going to pound my nuts flat with a ball peen hammer. I'm, I'm just, I need a break. I need a break. Don't get me wrong. Uh, rookie content is incredibly important for Dynasty GMs, but... Yep. Uh, we, we, we've talked all we can talk. We, we've examined speed times. We've examined agility. Uh, I'm doing mock drafts on YouTube. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. But I, I do want to mention the, uh, the show last week with Pete Law. Uh, Pete is a, an old friend of both of ours going back yep. to the Dynasty Football Factory days. Pete was on here, and it was the Rookie Rundown show, which would have been Sunday the, the 13th, maybe, 12, 11th, something like that. And Pete shared his story. First of all, Pete shared a lot of wisdom about this rookie running back class and rookies in general. But he also shared his story, his story of post-traumatic stress syndrome from his time in the military, uh, being a first responder, being a law enforcement officer, and just an all-around good dude. Uh, He's here to help. He's a resource. And even if uh, it's not necessarily your thing, it's a great story. And I'm really proud of Pete. And I'm really humbled that he would share his story with our audience on this show and that segues me to our most recent review and it says powerful pete thanks for your service but also thank you for sharing powerful 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 and that was from tony 4279 via apple podcast you know we love five star reviews here at the dynasty war zone podcast but helping pete get out his message and the importance of mental health and uh, just helping people. We know we always say making the world a better place for fantasy football. And I know you weren't on that show. I know you had a chance to go back and listen. What did you take away from Pete's message? He's just, you know, like you you already said, he's just, he's a kick-ass dude. And it's just, it's something that people need to talk about more. It, it For so long, you know, us, you know, we're a little bit older than, uh, you know, a lot of people that are playing this game. It's been such a thing that just people don't talk about. So it's good to get it out in the open. It makes everything better. It makes you realize that you're not stuck within your own head. And and just talking about it is better. And there's a lot of great resources that are going on, even in this community itself, about mental health. So it's just something that people need to take very seriously. Loved it. And, you know, like I said, Pete's just a kick-ass dude. And he's always been a kick-ass dude. And speaking of being kick-ass, man, you guys can be kick-ass by going over to Apple. We're back on Spotify. I was doing some research at a baseball game this weekend. My son plays travel baseball, and when you're at five hours of baseball on Saturday and nine hours on Sunday, you have some time. And I was reviewing some analytics on Podbean, our podcast platform, and I was like, it's like, stream your podcast on Spotify. I'm like, I've done that. But then I realized, so we've not been on Spotify, but you can go back to Spotify uh, we're, we're, we're now back to more podcast players. I don't know why they would drop us. I mean, who would drop the Dynasty War Zone? But you could prevent that from happening by going and leaving a review. We're at 194. Literally a six-pack of reviews away from 200. You could be number 200, and it helps the show. I mentioned YouTube earlier. Uh, last night, which would have been Monday night as we're recording this now, I did a one QB, three-round rookie mock on sleeper the whole thing took 10 minutes and if you've never done a rookie mock or any mock on sleeper i kind of took you through a little how to jerry now jerry you heard me dog cussing the the sleeper mock draft adp because it had trevor lawrence as the 103 in a rookie startup what kind of bullshit is that yeah in a one qb that's something i don't 
I can't you know, get you know what I think that. it is. You know what I think it is. I, I think that because MFL does this too. So if you go to if you do an MFL draft, which you and I recently completed one, the rookies were mixed in there, and I think because more and more people are playing Superflex Dynasty Fantasy Football and Superflex in general, those two ADPs have blended so much that the algorithm or the data that they use on their mock draft automatically pulls Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence into the first round. But check it out. And you can see I did hit the pause button so I could talk about the guys that I took. It was a lot of fun. And if you subscribe with the notifications turned on, you'll never miss it. I'm going to do a one to two of those a week. I've been doing the whiteboard at Memphis. Just a lot of content that if you're a podcast only subscriber here to the DWZ, you're missing out on some bonus fun content over on YouTube. And remember, the YouTube is the bot, the, the backup for the podcast. If for some reason you ever go to a Wednesday, Jerry, this is 147 Wednesdays in a row. I haven't done anything 147 times in a row. Well, we've, we've always been here for each other. You know, you've had school. I've been on vacations. We've had our friends Kyle, Seth, so many people, JD from the GOAT District. So many people over the years jump in to keep uh, keep the streak alive if you will. But if you ever wake up on a Wednesday as a loyal podcast listener and it's not there, man, go to YouTube and double check because we've had some buddies of ours get a two-week podcast jail suspension for using copyrighted music. Now, we don't do that. Uh, have we done that? No. No, we haven't. <laughs> but but just in case the, the fine folks at our podcast platform were to get confused and there was no Wednesday show, Rest assured, we would be on YouTube. So tonight we're going to talk. We're going to talk about some some Deshaun Watson. We're going to talk about some players that could be helped or hurt by this rookie draft class. But before we dive into that, we'll talk about the Patreon for just a minute. Uh, what we bring on, like last week while I was on vacation, like five or six new people. They've taken over the chat. The chat's on fire, twenty four seven. Thanks to those Australians, the people in Iceland, London, and I think it's the best value in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Warzone. It's five bucks a month. It's still five bucks a month. And it's probably always going to be five bucks a month, unless for some reason five bucks doesn't mean what it used to mean. And and that's cool because there are podcasts out there that have Patreons that range from five to thirty bucks a month and and good for them. But I think the volume of what you get and the value of what we, we provide uh, speaks for itself. You get a podcast every single every single Thursday. And if I miss a Thursday, I make it up. We do roster, uh, kind of like the Dynasty Happy Hour contractor for Patreons only. We do strategy-based pods. We do a lot. And uh, I think it's great. We just kicked off our 10th patron league. I think 10 starts on Saturday, Jerry. Are you in? Yeah. You, you've oh, been yeah. out. You weren't in the last one. No, I was not in nine. We left you out. Yeah, well. I told you them guys, to. <laughs> you guys wanted a competitive league. You didn't want a punching bag. Well, you're the king of the productive struggle. It's I no do longer like the pro- it's no longer the productive struggle. It's the Jerry Sinclair method. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's um it's named after you. It's like uh, uh, what's his name the uh, the famous baseball player who has the uh, um oh my Lou Gehrig's disease. Productive struggle is now the Jerry Sinclair method. It's named after you. You do it so much. Uh, I think well, I think we'll let Jerry play. In, in Patreon 10, but if you want to find out what the Dynasty Warzone Patreon is all about, the group chat, the leagues, the podcast, just go to patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Warzone. And one last thing, you can follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at Dynasty Warzone on both. And if you're not on socials, that's cool too. Shoot us an email, dynastywarzone at gmail.com. We will get you hooked up. All right, Jerry, are you ready to talk a little to Sean Watson? I am always ready to talk a little Deshaun Watson. Well, it came out so about what six weeks ago? Is that a fair date? About six weeks Sounds ago. About. It came out that a masseuse, then two, then twenty-two, accused this man of what we would call sexual improprieties. Or, or have you heard this, Jerry? I have. And in the dining, because we're not not every league that I'm in, or not every league that Jerry's in. Are we in every league together? And what, what by and large, has been the consensus? Now, patrons are, are excluded because we talk about that as a group. But in your non-Dynasty Warzone patron leagues, what have you seen as the general consensus reaction to Deshaun Watson? Um, I Listen, I actually just traded for him in a league. I know we're going to talk about that in a second. So I think panic is really starting to set in. 
Now, we had some interesting news that came out, Randy. So if you want to go into that a little bit. Yeah, well, I'll talk about what, what I saw in some of my leagues. Um, we're supposed to be in these leagues to Gary, together, but I never let Jerry come and play in those reindeer games. It's called the Ultimate Dynasty Podcasters League. And guys at the FF Dynasty, um, you know, they, they, they do it as a group. I just represent the Dynasty Warzone. Jerry's not in these leagues. Listen, and, listen, uh, and, and, and to, to your defense, I'm not a huge person that shares teams. I don't really yeah, love hard. sharing teams. It's hard. It's 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 I, I don't does not play well with others. Is that one no. of those things? Yes, and, exactly. And I, I like just like I like having that line item veto power or, or and whatever. I, I trust you. You're not going to make us look totally stupid. No, I mean, not that not that I need the help, but, <laughs> you know, in a couple of leagues. So I can share two reactions that I saw personally. One was the, the moral high ground. And that's cool. Um, if you can't stomach you know, having a guy that was accused of doing something like this, and in some case, multiple times of doing something like this. Okay, I get it. I, I, I get it. But, you know, as Jerry said, the, the defense has released their case. And I, I got to say it was pretty damning. But the first guy was just like, he, he pussyfooted around a little bit about do I want to move him, do I, do I not? And then when like the 22nd masseuse came out with an allegation, he was just like, I'm done. Putting him on the board, highest bidder wins, come and get him. And then the same thing happened in another, in another league. And in the first league, he went for a 2022 20, second, a 2022 20, first, and it was like three picks, but none of them were anytime really soon. And then the second one was Ben Roethlisberger and like a Jerry Judy and like a second. I mean, it was a, a sack of beans. And I see the look on your face as if like you're, you're dumb. Do you want to reply or do you, do you want me just I, to keep going? Listen, I, I just did that trade. I'm going to try and pull it up so I have it exactly right. You're, you're, you're good. I'll give you a minute because I don't have a, a, um, a moral gag reflex as it relates to Dynasty Fantasy Football. No. I'm not inviting these gents over for dinner. I'm not introducing them to my grandma. Uh, I'm not. I, I just want to win Fantasy Football. I can draw a clear line. No, I get it from like a team aspect. I could get to where the NFL would not want to support these guys if they're found guilty. But did, did you find your trade? I did. Okay, share your okay, trade so that, that I you saw. Thought, I thought I made out like a bandit with my trade, but yours were even something else. I at least gave up some young good pieces in mine. So I got Deshaun Watson 204 and 206. I gave up two-thirds Juju Smith and TJ Hawkinson. It's a non tight end premium league. So, I mean, I, I thought that was such an easy trade for me to make, even though I don't really need Is that need a Superflex? Yes, yes, it is oh, a wow. Superflex. Yeah. Wow, wow. And I, I have plenty of quarterbacks. I have Kyler Murray, and I have Lamar Jackson, and I have the 102. So I'm I'm set at QB, but when he offered it initially, I it, it had to do with Lamar Jackson. I told him to go piss off. But then we I told him if he wanted to do skill position, we could do that. And he settled on Juju, and I was like, "Okay, well, this is gonna um, be great. Let's I, just I, I let's couldn't. just work this out." Congratulations! But those other trades that you talked about, I think well, those are even cheaper than what I got. Well, I, so in both of these leagues, I put in a bid. In both of these leagues, I because both of these owners said, "Hey, I'm taking bids until like 10 p.m. or whatever the time frame was, and I'm going to take the the one that I like best." But I am moving to Sean Watson, and in one league, I offered the best pick I had was the 110. So I offered the 110. Uh, then I, in a separate trade, I offered Jared Goff. So you could have, you know, he could have Either accepted one. Jared Goff. He could have accepted the 110 because if you're giving up Deshaun Watson in a super flex, you're going to need a quarterback. Yeah. And then the other, in the other league, I offered the, the, the best pick I had was the 108. So I offered the 108. And in both cases, I was not the winning bidder. That's okay. That's what I felt comfortable paying. I have plenty of quarterbacks in both of these leagues, but, uh, the reason why I, I brought this up is because you're probably thinking, hey, is this old news? It's not. There's actually new news. That's why it's called news. And the news is is Deshaun Watson and his attorney, Rusty Harden, which Rusty's a great name. It's, Rusty um, Harden is a fantastic name Ru in general. Rusty Harden. Uh, I'm not going to make too much fun. I do have a cousin named Rusty. And uh, my favorite Griswold from the movie <laughs> Vegas Vacation. Rusty Griswold, but but Deshaun Watson and his attorney, Rustin, Rusty Harden, they fired back. And Adam Schefter 
posted the documents filed in court, I believe in Texas, and Ian Rappaport tweeted them out as well. And I got to say, man, they fired back hard. They referred to these massage therapists bragging on social media about working with John Watson, about others had claimed that they were repulsed by his actions, but then went on to invite him back unsolicited for more work. And I read all four pages and it's very, very compelling. At the end of the day, I am not a lawyer. At some point, I would like to get Jordan McNamara back on. I believe Jordan McNamara, I know he's an attorney by trade, but I believe he's a, a defense attorney, but he could be a prosecutor. I know he, do, he deals with criminal and civil law and, and these type of things. And I would love to get him on because based on what I read, I think it would be really, really hard to get a criminal conviction. Now, to get a, a civil conviction, it could be different but after reading this, and again, I'm no lawyer, but I did watch Law and Order many times, uh, like on TBS, like you're sick, you stay home from work, and, and, and you watch this stuff. And I got to feel like the, the term they throw around on these shows, Jerry, is the preponderance of the evidence. I feel like that when they get into a courtroom, and he and his attorney have requested a jury trial, that the preponderance of the evidence, the majority of the evidence, is going to be very close. So I really feel like this could be settled out of court. I feel like this could be thrown out of court. And I feel like the worst case scenario is that he's going to get 6 to 10 games. What do you think? What do you think from an NFL? Even Because, you know, Uncle Roger, Judge Raj, Judge Goodell, he doesn't need a conviction to suspend. What do you think is going to be the scenario for Deshaun Watson? I think you're about in the same the same thinking as I am. Um, you know, regardless of what happens or or how it plays out, I think the one thing that we can take from this bit of news is that it is it, it is going to be a fight. Um, and and he does have some legs to stand on in several of the cases. You know, I I don't know if he's a piece of shit or not. I don't. It's not it, like you said. I'm not a lawyer. It's not my job to know it. I wasn't there. Um, I, as we sit here as fantasy football podcast hosts, I think Deshaun Watson is going to play. I think he is going to play in 2021 and let's say he doesn't worst case scenario. How much value are you dropping him, Randy? Cause mine is, is I'm going to go buy him because I can get him for cheaper than he should be, but I'm definitely not scared of his long-term dynasty, you know, prowess at all. Well, I'll do a call back to our patron chat, because when this came out the other day, the first place that I went to share my thoughts on this was our Patreon. And to me, I'm going to use another legal term. It's called precedent. What has been done in the past that can help you predict the future? And a couple of recent examples that come to mind, and I don't mean the Ben, the ben Roethlisberger one from like 2010 where he got six games. I'm talking about, was it three or four years ago where Zeke Elliott was simply accused Never convicted, never even, I think he was charged, but the charges were dropped, but he never was convicted of domestic violence, but he got six games. We have the one from last summer where Antonio Brown got into a fight with a moving truck driver on top of all the Instagram stories, you know, shenanigans with his, you know, children's mother and throwing him out on the street and Again, he had a felony charge and went to court, and I think he was wearing like the orange jumpsuit. And then the, the coup de grace, the big one, if you will, was two years ago. Kareem Hunt literally kicked a woman in the head on camera. Maybe it was the butt, but he definitely kicked a woman on camera, and he got 10 games. So I'm looking at this Deshaun Watson, and I'm reading these, these legal documents, and I'm thinking to myself, somewhere between six and 10 games is the worst case scenario for me. Now, what I'm telling myself is, is this, if we find out Deshaun Watson is going to miss six games, Jerry, okay? Yep. Is, is that any more concerning than if he had gotten a, a severe hamstring tear in like the fourth preseason game or the third this year, because there's only three due to the newest schedule. The, the only difference is, is that if, if he would miss six games due to a hamstring tear, there's the reoccurrence of injury happening. In this case, he's going to miss potentially a handful of games, and then he's going to come back healthy. And one thing I will tell you, this gives him and the Houston Texans an out. Because, you know, he has said that he is never going to wear a Houston Texans jersey again. Well, what's his story now? 
hey, you know, I know what I said, you know, in the winter, in the, in the early spring, but I have to say after the Houston Texans have stood by me in my most trying time as an adult, uh, I am going to be proud to put back on that Houston Texans jersey because I listened to the John Middlecoff podcast. It's called Three and Out, and he was an NFL scout, and he was talking on his show that every team in the league has Deshaun Watson on the do not touch list. And if Deshaun Watson's going to leave Houston, he's not going to leave Houston until 2022. Now, when he says the do not touch list, that means right now currently. Because of these situations and because of all the negative press, a team cannot invest that kind of draft capital to go after the guy. So he's probably going to be playing in Houston 99 out of 100 times. He's probably not going to get a huge suspension. And he's still going to be able to help you win dynasty championships. So that's where I'm at with him. Uh, I've been encouraging people to uh, proactively look at picking up shares here or there before this becomes common you know, conversation in the dynasty landscape. Do you agree with that? Am I crazy? I know um, I sound like I know a lot about the law. I really don't. I mean, I don't either. But I, what I do know is how the NFL works. And the NFL doesn't give a damn. The NFL wants money makers, and guess what Deshaun Watson is? Deshaun Watson is a money maker at the money maker of all money maker positions. I, I think Deshaun Watson can play. I do. I I really truthfully do. I and he'll face a suspension. Okay. Next. Well, let, let me let next, me let me next with, a, with with another legal term. Get six, do four. Get six, do three. You know, that's what they do in the legal system. They give you like, what, 20 years, you do 10, you get time off for good behavior. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see where they suspend him for six games and the NFL Players Association helps him get it worked down to four games. And, and, and let's say let's say we knew he was going to be suspended 10 games. We, uh, we'll, I will add games to your total. How much does that hurt his dynasty value? My guess is maybe a spot or two in startup ADP. And that's it, it, and 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 that's it. And that is such a minuscule amount that it is almost irrelevant. If I saw him doing one of those stupid videos on like a yoga ball or like a Bosu ball, and they're you know throwing stuff at him, and he slips and falls and tears an ACL, and none of this negative bad situation ever happened, it doesn't change anything. You know, you're not going to have him for a while. You know, he's a quarterback. You know, he's 25 years old. He's going to be good. He's going to be good. So if this has not become common knowledge, I'm not telling you to go out and sell a farm. My final piece to this is I'll tell you what I told our Patreons about a month ago. If I have a contending roster, I'm looking to acquire Deshaun Watson. If I have a rebuild, I'm not going after Deshaun Watson. Because if you're a contender, odds are you have a good roster. And if you have a good roster, you can afford to take the hit if Deshaun Watson just goes absolutely crazy, loses his mind, and he gets suspended for a year or two years or whatever. Now, that's the worst case scenario. I don't think that'll happen, but I, it could. I don't think two years can happen. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that because that, that would be very devastating to a super flex yes. roster if he's to get suspended for a long period of time. But a contender can kind of fade some of that because you've got a good roster. But if you're a rebuilding roster, it's very hard to invest a lot of capital even marginal capital into a rebuild because if the worst case happens, you're already playing from behind with a rebuild. And to invest in a uh, dangerous asset, which he still is, you know, John yep. Middlecoff, again, he said, you know, he's a very hot property in front offices in the league because of his current situation. He should be that way too if you're not a contender. If you're rebuilding, I just let it go unless you can get like a super steal or you're or your personal appetite for risk is a little bit higher than others. I think that's how I would leave it, Jerry. I, I, I hear you. And here's my thing is I think once people started hearing the the number of, of people that were coming out and all, all everything that was getting filed against him, I think people thought he was never going to play again. And, and you're thinking you have an asset that you're just trying to get anything you can for him. And Randy, that's an overreaction. And if there is anything that is dumb in the dynasty fantasy football world, it's overreactions. Did the Tyreek Hill situation teach us nothing as 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 dynasty GMs? Dude, he the, was like a fifth, sixth round startup dude, pick, they and were, he missed nothing. People and and giving, he was innocent. Well, well, I don't know about innocent. The, well, I, I, right, right. He was he was never charged. He was never convicted. He was never suspended. I don't know how this Deshaun Watson situation is going to play out, 
but sometimes you can look to the past to predict the future. Jerry, I think we we finally did a good job of summing up the Deshaun Watson situation. I am going to call my first time out for our friends over at Viridian Global, that is the official apparel provider of the DWZ. All right, and we're back thanks to our friends at Viridian Global. Uh, look for some new designs over there soon. We are looking to get some new stuff out on the website, but until then, we're still offering t-shirts, hats, hoodies, etc. So, all right, Jerry, let's talk about a few people, uh, a few veterans on your dynasty rosters that I think you got to be sweating this draft. You ready for my first one? Okay, shoot. All right, Tyler Boyd. Uh, again, patron question about what, what am I doing with Tyler Boyd? Here's the thing. If the Cincinnati Bengals do what I think is the sensible thing and draft Panay Sewell at the fifth overall pick, dude, wheels up on Tyler Boyd. To me, Tyler Boyd falls in this weird purgatory of wide receivers. He's somewhere between wide receiver 25 and wide receiver 40 in a startup. He's always going to be worth more points in your fantasy roster than he's ever going to be in like a trade with another GM. But I really fear for this man that he could get nuked from a value standpoint if the Bengals were to draft Kyle Pitts or were to draft Jamar Chase. And why does that make me nervous? It just pushes him one peg lower down the ladder. You know, then it would be, let's say they draft Jamar Chase for, for, an, for an easy you know, wide receiver depth chart. Well, the fifth overall pick, Jamar Chase, last year's top 40 pick, T. Higgins, and then now you have Tyler Boyd. And what, what, what it makes me very nervous. So if he can dodge a bullet, because I think if he dodges 105, they're not going to go wide receiver at like 205 or 206. Uh, Jerry, you've always been more of a Tyler Boyd guy than I. What do you think about me saying you got to sweat Tyler Boyd until about the next 10 days? I mean, I'm more of a Tyler Boyd guy, but I don't love him like other people love him. But I think you're right. Um, and l let's say even if they did take a wide receiver in the second or the third round, you're not going to sweat it like you have to do if Jamar Chase comes to town. If Jamar Chase comes down with T. Higgins, it, even if even if Tyler Boyd doesn't take a hit production-wise, which seems like it would be inevitable, but even if he didn't, his perception and his trade value would shrink, and he already doesn't have a great perception for his trade value. If you go out and try and get Tyler Boyd, like you said, he's more valuable in your roster than he is to go try and flip. So that would be utterly utterly detrimental to his production um but we'll know quickly um and it, and if he can stay the people that are acquiring him now you're going to be so happy you are going to be so happy and and here's to hoping that they do take Panay Sewell because they need it you uh, a young quarterback needs to stay up especially one that's suffering from a knee injury but you know it would be a fun offense if they didn't if they could protect him yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I'm I'm not doing much with, with Tyler Boyd now, uh, just too volatile. But Tyler Boyd's the kind of guy that's hard to move anyway. Like I said, he's kind of got like that Jarvis Landry type yeah, appeal to him. Uh, I think that's perfect. He's he's a poor he's a poor man's uh, Adam Thielen. So I do like Tyler Boyd. I like the fact that Cincinnati's got a very pass heavy offense. They got a bad defense. They're always playing from behind, so the ball's going to be in the air. But I just you know. More uh, more high end targets takes you know overall targets away from Boyd. So my my next guy is uh, Mr. Robert Tanyan. Came out of nowhere. I don't want to say he's a top five tight end, but man, you could certainly see the upside. They put the restricted free agent tag on him. I believe he signed his tender, so he's gonna be back. He's a guy that. I don't think they would draft a tight end. They're not going to be drafting anywhere near Kyle Pitts. But you have to think they bring in uh, some competition for targets. I know uh, previous dynasty darling Jace Sternberger continues to lurk. Uh, Jerry, what do you think Green Bay does from a pass catcher standpoint? And do you think Robert Tanyan's 59 targets from 2020 is both safe and repeatable? I don't I don't even want to try and predict whatever in the hell the Packers are going to do offensively because they they should have addressed those things last year and they didn't and it improved their team exactly zero wins and zero, you know, steps further into the playoffs. So I I would like to think that they're going to bring in another pass catcher, but 
I agree with you. I don't think they're going to be drafting a tight end. I don't think anyone's going to actually compete with Robert Tanyan as the main tight end in Green Bay. But I, I just have to believe that they bring in a wide receiver who will take some more targets. And, you know, as far as his 59 targets, I think that's relatively safe. I think the question is, is, is he going to get 11 touchdowns again? If he gets four touchdowns and has 500 yards again, I mean, that's that's just a, a another guy. That's just a, a, one of the fish in a barrel, and you're just going to reach in there and grab him. But I don't know. I don't, I don't love Robert Tanyan. I don't see him being a consistent double-digit touchdown guy, but you know, I, I do have a couple shares because I got him for free, so hopefully I'm wrong there. I, as a Lions fan, I don't want the the Packers to get more pass catchers, but I don't know how you don't if you're their GM. Well, I I do feel comfortable that his 59 targets are or more repeatable over the last three years, where Rodgers has healthy, he's he's attempted over 500 plus attempts a season, so he's only getting about what is that, about 12 percent, 11, 12 percent, you know, target share. So that number should feel relatively safe, but. Uh, more more players in the offense will continue to smooth out the distribution curve. All right, next guy, Logan Thomas, came out of nowhere, favorite of the recently retired, and a little tip of the cap to Mr. Mr. Alex Smith. And uh, you know a guy loves something, Jerry, when you know you don't need the money, you're risking major life, not just injury, but major life-altering uh, circumstances to continue to do something you love. So you know Alex Smith clearly loved football. But uh, Logan Thomas, man, another guy, much like Robert Tanyan, popped out of nowhere and uh, hit the scene hard. What are your thoughts on Robert, on, excuse me, on uh, uh, Logan Thomas? He is an interesting, an interesting asset because for whatever reason, I do sort of believe in him, even though there is going to be sort of a change um, in how – really every piece of that offense works. So I, I do like Logan Thomas. And the thing about Logan Thomas is his, his trade value and his, you know, his dynasty narrative. He's sort of cheap. He's, he's one of these guys that's just not loved. And, and, and maybe it's because for the same reason that I don't love Robert Tanyan, but people don't love Logan Thomas, even though he, this dude had 110 targets last year. He had 72 catches. I, I mean, that is unbelievable for a dude to just explode out of nowhere. I, I like him. I, I think it, when it comes to my redrafts and, you know, when I'm doing dynasty startups, Logan Thomas is going to be one of the guys I do because he's going to fall. And he's going to fall into the ninth, 10th, 11th round, I think, even in tight end premium leagues. You know, Logan Thomas is the kind of guy I would like to build off of that success in 2020 and add to to get a TJ Hawkinson to get a to, to, to get in that big three or four I don't I mean can, can I add a first and Logan Thomas to go get TJ Hawkinson in a tight end premium league where I really want to solid you know get a solid tight end nothing against Logan Thomas but it was his age 29 season big breakout again the quarterback who helped him break out wasn't there they've brought in Curtis Samuel again we were just talking about target distribution and that offense, uh, but I think you're going to see the the running backs continue to be involved. You've got Fitzmagic. You know, Fitzmagic's got more of that outside deep ball, YOLO ball type of guy. So I don't know what his relationship's going to be like with Logan Thomas. I will say this, of the two tight ends we just talked about, I feel a lot more comfortable with Robert Tanyan than I do Logan Thomas. I would just like to use his success and some, some draft capital to uh, to get out of Logan Thomas and get into some. Somebody. I think that goes for both of these guys. For me, though, like like if I could pair a first with him and move up, I would definitely do that. And then a couple of wide receivers that I'm really sweating. The biggest name that I have on the the board uh, before we get into the QBs is Calvin Ridley. And I mean, we've seen Calvin Ridley be an absolute badass the last couple of years, volume on volume. Uh, luckily, his quarterback's going to stay the same. It's going to be Matt Ryan, at least for 2021. Uh, Julio continues to get older, and I love Julio, but you know he feels like he's on that fast track of Jordy Nelson, A.J. Green, and uh, so many others. My fear is if they bring in Jamar Chase. 
Kyle Pitts is a little bit more of a devastating blow for Hayden Hurst. But if you bring in a pass catcher at the 104 as the new head coach with a new GM, Jerry, don't you feel like you're working with your head coach and feel like, hey, how can we prominently feature this new asset? And at whose, whose expense does that come from? I, I, I hear you. I think that would be a tough sell for me going into next year, though. Kelvin Ridley does have a ton of, you know, a ton of experience in this league. He's old, he's experienced, he's productive. Julio Jones is there. Honestly, I think Jamar Chase would be the perfect buy candidate if he ends up in Atlanta because it is a good situation and because I don't think his production will meet where you will have to draft him. But I hear you. I will need some more convincing. If, if you can convince me a little bit better that if they take Jamar Chase, Calvin Ridley will immediately, his production will immediately see a dip. Now, I understand that his trade value would see a dip because Jamar Chase is new and everybody loves shiny new toys. Well, no, we're, we're, we're in agreement there. Just, uh, man, the guy's gotten so much volume over the, la- the last couple of years. You know, last year he played 15 games and had 143 targets. And that includes a, that includes a goose egg where he did suit up against Green Bay. So, I <laughs> yeah, mean, that was how the hell did that happen? I mean, that's another sidebar. He, but. he is something else, man. Uh, he set career highs in receptions with 90, 1,374 yards. He had nine TDs. Ironically, nine TDs, not a career high. He had 10 as a rookie. But just the perception in the dynasty landscape. I, I kind of, now that we've had this conversation, which obviously we don't do a lot of conversation pre-show because we both work on top of other things that we do in, in, our, in our real lives, but that might not be a bad play. And, uh, you know, someone to phase out Julio, although I think Julio's contract is basically going to keep him there. Yeah. The, interest, the interesting thing in 2022, the 2022 offseason is going to be, is who do they commit to in Atlanta? Because I could easily see Atlanta taking the big cap hit as the Rams set the precedent a couple of years ago, taking a ginormous cap hit with Todd Gurley. The Eagles did it this year with Carson Wentz. And I just kind of feel like Atlanta might be going down that huge cap hit road in 2022. Could it be Julio? Could it be Matt Ryan? Don't know. A couple of quarterbacks on this list. Now, one guy I know is going to get replaced. I'm just not sure when, and that's Jimmy GQ, the ultra-handsome Jimmy Garoppolo. And uh, Mr. Cam Newton continue to hear smoke out there that the New England Patriots are interested in one of these rookie QBs and interested in moving up, uh, ironically, as high as number four with Atlanta. So out of, let me ask you this, if you were doing a startup today, who would you rather have on your roster? Would you rather have Cam Newton as like your QB three or four, or would you rather have Jimmy Garoppolo as your QB three or four? Cam Newton, not even close. Not even in the same ballpark for me. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a starter in this league ever again. And I think Cam Newton will be this year. So that's why See, I think that. I, I, I love I don't it. Think we it. have disagreement. Okay. I, I just, I, there is nothing in me that thinks, like why in the Sam hell would the San Francisco 49ers trade up to three if they were going to play him? And then where is he going to land right now that's going to be a great spot? Like, is he going to go to Denver and you're going to have to fight with Drew Locke? Oh, that's a effing great situation we'll we'll talk about him in a second yeah i just i i cannot foresee somebody watching jimmy garoppolo play and thinking you know what they kyle shanahan had it wrong i'm gonna bring him into my organization and he's gonna be the guy we need kiss my ass i just don't see that and i don't see cam newton playing long either because that dude looked like he had a noodle arm and i know he would pummel me into the dirt because he's a giant human being if i uh, i ever said that to his face but uh, i mean the 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 ship has sailed on that man but i do believe he is going to start this year even if they trade up and take a quarterback i think that quarterback sits behind cam newton for a long time because it is probably going to be a quarterback that can run the ball and if you want to sit behind a quarterback who knows how to run the ball and has been an MVP and has played in a Super Bowl, sitting behind Cam Newton and learning how to play the game and to be a professional is one hell of a good person to do it to. 
All right, let, let me hit you. I'm gonna hit you with some uh, some questions, like a like a prosecuting attorney. We talked about okay. the legal system earlier. Uh, what happened the last time Jimmy Garoppolo played a full 16 game schedule in San Francisco? They made the Super Bowl. And what was his completion percentage? I don't know. Probably Six, right. 69 percent. He had 4,000 yards passing, 27 touchdowns. So here's why I think, and I bet this, and I could post a picture of my ticket from FanDuel on Twitter. I bet that the at uh, plus 350, so I bet a nominal amount, and I will get three and a half times that when the San Francisco 49ers draft Trey Lance. So here's the thing. You can have, you remember the candies now and later? You can have now and later. You can start Jimmy Garoppolo. He can start the season. I think it goes without saying that Trey Lance is a little green as a prospect. You can you can give him the Mahomes treatment. I don't think there's anything wrong with giving a rookie QB the Mahomes treatment. You can have him sit behind uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. If something happens to Jimmy Garoppolo physically, which happens a lot, he could be forced into action sooner. I watch Cam Newton play football, and I ask myself, did, did, did this some bitch throw the ball left-handed before last year? <laughs> Because, I mean, his throwing motion is bad. It was bad. It was and bad. I do like what New England's doing. I like that New England is going to force you to jump in base personnel on defense a lot because they're going to line up with two tight ends. They're going to line up with some speedy wide receivers. They've got Nelson Aguilar there. Uh, I can see them drafting a wide receiver. So I could see this being a very interesting offense in New England. But here's the thing. If the Niners draft, let's say they draft Justin Fields, who would need to start like a day one type guy. You know who the number one candidate to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo is? The New England Patriots. I feel like he's got Cam double-dipped in this situation, so for that reason, I would much rather take a flyer on a Jimmy G. Uh, I could see him being in New England as soon as next year, too. So, uh, very well. But you mentioned another very polarizing name, and he could be our transition guy between the guys we're talking about now that are sweating him out and guys that are going to be the beneficiary of some rookies coming to town. What about Drew Locke, man? I feel like he's avoided free agency. He avoided Mitch Trubisky. He avoided Jameis. He avoided Andy Dalton. He avoided, he avoided Fitzmagic. It feels like he has to dodge a, a fellow rookie. I guess he wasn't a rookie anymore, but he has to dodge a rookie. And what do you think is going to happen with Drew Locke, man? I know what I think should be done with Drew Locke, and he should be – sent out into a ship for a Viking funeral and set on fire in the middle of a river because I don't know how people watch him play and think that he's going to be the leader of that franchise. I mean, this this dude played 13 games last year. He threw 16 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. The Broncos are in a weird spot where they're not exactly necessarily in a spot where they can grab one of the elite quarterbacks. Maybe they make a move. Maybe... You know, maybe Elway finally gets it right and he gets the quarterback he wants. I don't know. I, I, I am not relying on Drew Locke. If I can get anything for Drew Locke that even has a pulse, I would 100% do it. Uh, I have him in the Dynasty Warzone Devi League. I am not thrilled about it. If anybody is listening and would like him, by all means, come on down to Trade Town. Jerry is a waiting for you. What about you? You like your lock? I don't think you do. I mean, I know you like the quarterbacks that people don't like, but something about this just smells like Randy is about to crap on him. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not Odell Beckham Jr. If you know, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I want to believe. I really want to give this guy one more shot. And I'm thinking of it this way: They've got a new GM. I think his last name's Patton or Paton or. Uh, Michael Patton, I, kn I know it's Patton something, a and John Elway, but you got head coach Vic Fangio, and I really feel like he needs he needs a winning quarterback. They they, they didn't make any moves in free agency, which I, I which I would much rather them not. I, I know people love Fitz Magic, but people only remember the good times. It's kind of like Nick Foles; you only remember the good times. You only remember Big Dick Nick, but yeah. you, but you but you don't remember you don't remember all those years that he was absolute trash. And the same thing with Ryan Fitzpatrick and the same thing with Andy Dalton. I don't think there's that big of a difference besides the fact that we like Ryan Fitzmagic and his beard. Here's the thing. If, if, if I'm Vic Fangio and I'm asking myself, am I better off with a rookie or am I better off with Drew Locke? Do we want to give this kid one more season, a COVID-free, little bit more normal training camp season? He's going to have Cortland Sutton back. He's going to have Jerry Judy in year two. 
KJ Hamler, Noah Fant, please God stay healthy, Albert Oklahoma. Maybe they use that ninth overall pick and they take Christian Darasaw and beef up the offensive line. You know, m- maybe they do something like that. And they just, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to go all in on Drew Locke this year, kind of do what they did with Daniel Jones and Josh Allen and surround him with everything possible. And if he fails, he fails. And I really think that if there's any person who can get the most out of him, and I know I said this last year, but a COVID year will throw some shit off, is Pat Shermer. Pat Shermer got career years out of guys like Case Keenum, out of guys like Daniel Jones, and I believe that he could get, he could get a career year out of Drew Locke. So if you have a stronger appetite for risk and you want to go out and make a move, I don't mind throwing away a 2021 20, second to go get Drew Locke. If someone's just and you know what? I know that I could be setting that pick on fire. And I'm totally cool with that because I, I'm a gambler. I've got gamble in, in, in my spirit. And and that's on a contender. That's on a contender. Um, because I know that I could potentially flip him. If he's having a mediocre season, someone has it like you have Lamar Jackson, he gets hurt. Drew Locke's having a good season. I can always get that pick back. Maybe get that pick back plus a young upside player. So for those reasons, I'm not horribly out on on Drew Locke. You you just think he you think he's secure in his spot this year? Like I, I mean, 50, we're not 50, speaking in cer- Okay, I was gonna say 50, we're not speaking 50, in certainties. Of no, course, fifty but. fifty, man. You know, if if I, uh, we we're recording this on Tuesday the twentieth, four twenty. Smoke them if you got them. Uh, speaking of Denver, but. <laughs> If we look up 10 days from now and Denver has traded up and taken Justin Fields or Trey Lance, I'm not going to be surprised. Yeah, of if course. We look up, if we look up in 10 days from now and Vic Fangio drafts Micah Parsons or Patrick Sertain II to you know build out his defense, or they draft a Christian Darasol or, or a, um, an Elijah Vera Tucker, an offensive lineman, to go all in on Drew Locke, that's not going to surprise me easier. What I'm saying is, is right now, if you want to make a speculative ad based on the information that you have today, knowing that you could be wrong and that you could lose your investment, let's call it Drew Locke, the doji coin of quarterbacks. Very speculative market right now. But uh, I, th- I think you could look back in, in a week and feel like, man, I because when the information, that's what we do in a game of incomplete information. As the information becomes more clear, and, you know, if you wait until after the draft and Drew Locke is avoided competition, are you getting him for a second then? I, no. I, I hear you. I hear you. It, it, I, it, it, I think it, it, you have done a good job convincing me that he is probably going to be the guy because we have to think not like fantasy football people. We have to think like the general manager right. of the Denver Broncos. And the, he, he was absent Cortland Sutton last year. Yep. It was a COVID year. Yep. And they did invest a second round pick in him. I do think they probably give him another year now that we are discussing it deeper. What what happens to their twenty twenty two pick if uh, if Drew Locke shits the bed in twenty twenty one? Then it's even better, and they're not picking the fifth best quarterback. That's right. The, the, they're picking one of the top three quarterbacks next year. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario is is he takes a a, a year three growth like we didn't. Now, and we can't use Josh Allen for the year three growth for everybody. He's more of a unicorn. Yeah. But if he gets, if, if he if he can improve 50%, 65%, if he takes a step forward in his game, he clearly has the players and the tools around him, the offensive coordinator, to be successful. It's just a gamble because he could be replaced. But I would rather offer a second for him now. And potentially I can get, I, it's kind of like flipping, like flipping a house. You can get him cheap now. Worst case scenario, it goes to hell and you lose your investment. But the best case scenario is, is you can cash out for a tidy profit. And speaking of profit, let's talk about our third sponsor. Let's talk about Hate Brand Goods. All right, big shout out to Matt. He had a new release. Speaking of 420, he had a new 420 collection launch over at thehate.com. You can check that out. Even on new release goods, you can get a promo and a discount by using the promo code MEMPHIS at checkout. That's my uh, my stage name, M-E-M-P-H-I-S. You can use MEMPHIS at checkout and stick around for a little bit of the story behind the brand at the end of the show. So, all right, Jerry, here we go. Let's talk about some guys quickly. We've uh, we've, we've taken this one long form. Let's talk about some guys that have the, the ability 
to see their value go up very much after the draft one way or the other. The first guys, I'm a Singletary guy. Last year, you were a Zach Moss guy. I think both of these guys stay in the benefit from the draft. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you think they land one of the big three running backs? I don't. I don't think that they care enough. I think they have enough faith in the guys that they've drafted. They've drafted running backs in each of the last two years. I don't see them going a running back relatively early three years in a row. Um, whether these guys are going to grow and be worth a damn and help you win, that is a different conversation for a different day. But I do think that their value will peak a little bit um, because I don't really see the Bills addressing if they were going to do it, they would have done it in free agency with James Conner or Kenyon Drake or somebody like that. And I really don't see them investing in the draft. I think these guys can see a little peak. I think you, if you, you can get them for dirt ass cheap right now, and I think you can make a little bit of a profit, you know, come, come June, July, August. And that's exactly when I would do it. Cause I would not want to be relying on my, in my roster. Yeah, these these are the kind of guys that I believe uh, the Buffalo Bills have spent third round draft capital two years in a row on these guys. Ironically, both of these guys were born in Florida. Why the hell do you bring guys with Florida ties to the frozen tundra of Buffalo, New York? Seems like you'd bring like you draft a guy out of Pitt or you know some school like that. Boss like like AJ Dillon feels like he would be a good Buffalo right. Bill, but. I, I just see this team having other needs, having needs on the offensive line. Maybe want to bring in a wide receiver to replace John Smokey Brown. Uh, they need to invest in the defense a little bit, a little bit of pass rush help, maybe some help in the in the secondary. So I don't think that uh, they need too much on the offense. And th this is a a thought of mine that was inspired by good friend of the show Ray Garvin, aka at Ray GQ. And my man Ray Garvin was talking about how guys like. Um, is it Bijan? Bijan Robinson. Yes, Bijan Robinson. There's Tank Bigsby. Is it Bigsby? Yep. Um, and and he's, he was talking about this amazing running back class in 2022. And that amazing running back class in 2022 is the reason why I feel a lot of these marginal guys are going to get by in 2021. As bad as the 2021 running back class is from a draft standpoint, 2022 is going to be the exact opposite. I continue to see more names, and that's going to be the opportunity to move these guys. It's a 17-game series. Running, de running back depth is going to be an absolute premium this year. You're going to want some running back depth. So if you're sitting on Moss or Singletary, you're probably going to be sitting on a couple of guys. You're going to be starting here or there, bye weeks, injury filling and stuff. Uh, but the biggest name on this list, Jerry, is your man. If uh, they were to ever put a Jerry's Mans on the Dynasty Trade Calculator, and Izzy, I know you're listening, make it happen. Do it. Do it. James Robinson. That's Jerry's Mans. I think your man is safe. They brought in, uh, I'm, I'm going to quote my man, Matt, my, uh, Matt Kelly, the podfather. He called, he called Carlos Hyde a meat shield. It's hilarious, by the way. A meat shield. They brought in the meat shield that is Carlos Hyde. I really feel like if James Robinson avoids the big three, of Travis Atien, Najee Harris, and Javante Williams. He's home free. They're going to bring in somebody because you got to have plenty of legs, even in uh, the real NFL, 17-game season and all. How are you feeling about your man, Big James Robinson? Not sweating it, really at all. I, I have sort of valued him as he's going to be the guy, really, since the moment they signed Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde... Urban Meyer, they were always going to bring in somebody. This is the NFL. You cannot just have one running back. Zeke Elliott still has Tony Pollard. Christian McCaffrey had Mike Davis. I mean, you always, always, always have guys. He was just in a situation where he didn't last year, and they brought in somebody, and like Mr. Mr. Kelly said, they brought in a meat shield, somebody that Urban Meyer is familiar with. He knows his offense. Do you really think the Jaguars are going to draft one early? I just cannot imagine you looked at what James Robinson did in the NFL as a rookie and think that out of everything that you have going on and all the money and all the resources and everything that you're going to go after a running back. It just seems stupid. But I, I value James Robinson exactly where he's at. And there was a question that was posted on Twitter the other day, and it was in a super flex draft. 106 or James Robinson. And my response was, it depends what the person does with the pick. 
Um, if they were going to go after a quarterback, I would prefer the pick because it's a quarterback and it's a super flex league. If they want a skill position guy, I would prefer James Robinson because I think he's just going to get a shitload more of an opportunity than anyone that would be drafted in that spot. Listen, I'm in on James Robinson, but I agree. I think the rest of the community would also be extremely high on James Robinson if they, you know, if he avoids, you know, uh, uh, one of the top three running backs. Uh, for me, I am I am one of the OG James Robinson investors. Much like I bought Doji coin or Doge or whatever the hell coin it is, I bought it at nine tenths of a cent. It was let it was worth one penny, less than one penny when I bought it, and that's kind of how I feel about James Robinson. And I'm going to be selling my James Robinson stock in season, especially if I'm not contending, because I do believe that the Jaguars are going to suck because that's what the Jaguars do, and they're going to suck. And they're going to be drafting more closer to like the 112, 115 next year in the draft. And they could be in play for one of those really good running backs that Ray was talking about. So I'm going to be looking to unload my James Robinson shares in like the middle of the season. Unless, unless he's still kicking ass like he was last year. And I'm kicking ass and contending. Uh, another couple of guys close and near and dear to my heart. Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell. First of all, if you write mock drafts. If you're on CBS, if you're on Fox, if you're on ESPN, if you're Joe Average on Twitter and you write mock drafts and you mock draft a wide receiver to the Indianapolis Colts in the first round, I am throwing your mock draft out the damn window. Just get the hell out of here. Get do you have you ever seen Chris Ballard draft? You have one of three options at their 121. Three. One of three. You ready, Jerry? One of three. Yep. Here we go. Offensive tackle. Biggest need on the team. Okay? Offensive tackle. Number two, edge rusher. One of the weakest areas of the team, and they let Justin Houston walk in free agency. Or he's going to trade back to accumulate more picks to offset the amount of picks that they've given up to get Carson Wentz. He's going to start looking to reaccumulate some of that draft capital. They're not taking Kadarius Tony CBS in your jackass mock draft. Out of all the stuff you do right at CBS with our friend Heath Cummings, uh, who I'm in a league with. I shared uh, a league in the Scott Fishbowl with last year. Out of all the stuff you do well, Dave Richard and all the guys at CBS, to do a mock-ass dr mock draft with Kadarius Tony going to the Colts at the 121, I will come and I will slap you. I will slap you because I don't think the Colts are going to do that. I think they're going to go tackle or offensive lineman, defensive lineman, trade back. And if that happens, Jerry... It's wheels up on Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell, the forgotten about guy, uh, you know, had some injury issues his first two years. Maybe he can pull it all together. And uh, Carson Wentz has got the arm to match his speed. I'm, I'm pretty excited about these two. Do you think these two avoid competition and uh, have the big wheels up? Um, I think that they will still have all of their value, but I think that your team is going to address the wide receiver position. And I think that will immediately boost whoever that is. Um, not necessarily will it be detrimental to either of them when it comes to production at the start of the season, but I do think their trade value will dip and whoever goes into that situation will immediately increase, whether it's, you know, in the second or third or wherever in the hell they take a wide receiver. Um, Michael Pittman's a guy I really like. And, you know, we're Carson Wentz people. Sorry. I mean, we are. Um, so I I have faith in It's the, okay. You the, can blame me. You, you, you can blame it, me. It, it, it's fine. It is, but, I mean, I've always sort of liked Carson Wentz, but, you know, I just think this situation, this new – he knows this is it. Like, it, it, you, you, were, you were Jameis Winston for about a month, and you ended up getting the opportunity that you needed to turn that around. And if you don't want to keep that, you, you need to take it away with this shot. So I, I am excited for Michael Pittman. I, I don't exactly love Paris Campbell. I would I'm love getting, to actually see something, but. I, I'm getting 20, 20, I'm getting 2017 Alshon Jeffrey vibes with, with okay. Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, if he can stay healthy, I know he had the calf issue last year, but I mean, I just, I saw Uncle Phil, who we were going to put out to the glue factory in 2020 and the guy came in and threw for you know, like 27 touchdowns and 4100 yards passing and like 11 interceptions had a great year and this is a team that you know is, is going to have to score some points 
So I, I like it. I got two more for you before we take her in for landing. Are you ready? Yep. Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs in Las Vegas in the desert. I know they brought in John Brown, but John Brown, not the healthiest dude around, in case you, you did not know that about John Brown. And if the Las Vegas Raiders invest first, second, or third round draft capital in the offense, uh, it won't happen because they're owed so much money. But like John Gruden and Mike Mayock deserve to be fired for dereliction of duty. Their defense is absolute cheeks. Now they brought in uh, an old, uh, I think it's Gus Bradley, former defensive coordinator, has some ties to Gruden. Uh, I know they picked up, I forget his name, he was an edge rusher that came over from Baltimore by way of Minneapolis and Jacksonville. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, um, and Dockway. Um, forget his first name. Yannick. But Yannick and Dockway, thank you. And this is a team that really needs to invest in defense. I've seen them uh, mock uh, drafted taking Caleb Farley, the cornerback out of Virginia Tech, who's going to fall a little bit due to some back issues. And, uh, man, Oakland needs to shore up all over. I mean, they, they have issues at all three levels. They have off, they have issues at the offense, the, the defensive line. They have issues at the, the linebacker. And they damn sure have issues in that secondary, Jerry. So uh, I really think Henry Ruggs and G Brian Edwards come out as unscathed. Of those two, who, who would you like to have more? Uh, I don't know because I think Brian Edwards costs more, even though he was a lower draft pick. I mean, Henry Ruggs was the first wide receiver taken in last year's draft, which is absurd to think about now with CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson and everybody. But I also don't trust that Henry Ruggs is going to be productive. Uh, so I think it would be Brian Edwards. I think I would just – I would want to go that route. I mean, the dude is going to be – I think he's still going to be 22 when the season starts, which is just insanity. Um, yeah, if they can avoid – a a any sort of wide receivers, which I think they will, because I think they do like these guys and they want to build around these guys. I could definitely see that, and I definitely would probably go with Brian Edwards, just because I really don't trust Henry Ruggs. I mean, sort of the same reason I'm not loving Jalen Waddle this in this draft class. I just, I don't know. I, 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 I don't not, know how I'm, you feel on. about it. But this is a rookie free super super show. But I'm not going to sit here and listen to you besmirch the good name of Jalen Waddle. You can do that on a future, a future episode. For me, I'm going to go because th this is where you have to take a step back and look at the situation from 40,000 feet. And for me, you have to look at Brian Edwards because of these two guys, who plays a game that's going to be more conducive to the game the quarterback plays? It's Brian Edwards, uh, unless John Gruden gets real creative. And he starts trying to get Henry Ruggs involved in the way that Kansas City gets Tyreek Hill involved and try to do more and unique and creative things with him. I, I think the the way that they will use these guys will favor Brian Edwards. And I think Brian Edwards' stock skyrockets if something happens to Darren Waller. Should he demand a trade? Should he leave in free agency at some point? Should he, you know, get injured, whatever that is, is, Brian Edwards would just, you know, his stock would jump to the moon. So these are some of the guys that I think that we could see get a huge increase the next couple of weeks in their value. So if you have them hold, some other names that I'm not going to get too deep into just to keep an eye on, Damian Harris, Anthony McFarlane, Chase Edwards, um, excuse me, Chase Edmonds, uh, you know, if for some reason Pittsburgh doesn't bring in a running back, and I don't think New England can afford to bring in a running back, at least not one of merit, uh, and Sony Michelle's cheeks. So all that being said, I really like Damian Harris this year and some others, Jerry. But uh, we got through the show. We did talk a little rookie, just a, a little, a little, a little rookies. And, uh, man, I'm ready to recharge my batteries and get back here next week. We have some guests. We have a first-timer on Sunday on the Rookie Rundown. Um, I think I've got confirmation. We'll see. Got a pretty uh, pretty big name, pretty exciting name for next Tuesday going into the draft with us. Might invite over some uh, some other friends, but what are you going to be looking for as we uh, enjoy this last week of uh, draft prep? I'm just going to eat everything. Eat everything that comes my way. Anything that anyone is producing right now, I'm eating it up. And I just, the problem with the draft is it is all consuming, Randy. It is It is a holiday for people like us. I don't want to tell you 
in, in, by any, you know, in, in the uh, case that my boss was listening, but I did request off the first round of the NFL draft because it's the draft and it's a holiday. Listen, it's my holiday. Other people have, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and Ramadan and whatever the hell else you got in this world. The football gods in me have a date, and that is the first round of the NFL draft. It is a day I care what the Jacksonville Jaguars do and the Indianapolis Colts do and the Arizona Cardinals and less about the Detroit Lions because they will not help my fantasy teams, but every other team in the league, and I will watch it from start to finish because – it's going to matter not only because you're a degenerate for, Jerry. Yes, you're a because we you're a not only because we're going to have to talk about it, but because it's going to affect my dynasty teams going forward. Can, can, can I be real honest with you? Yeah, I love the first round. I'll probably be behind this microphone doing uh, live appearances. I've already committed to one. I'll probably do some others on Thursday night. I really don't care about the first round. I pretty much already know which players are going in the first round. True. I've already started to build some notes. Where it gets fun, where the action gets good, is is, is the, the Friday draft for me is can't miss. The, the fine folks of Marvel and ESPN and Disney, they have done your boy a solid. The season finale of The Falcon and Winter Soldier is this Friday. Nerd. So which means next Friday, I don't have to figure out which, how am I going to, what am I going to watch one on my phone? What am I gonna, no, I'm, I'm good because I'm going to get episode six this Friday. And if you're not watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you are missing out. It's got all the Marvel movie aspects you love with a little bit of buddy cop humor. I might actually do that as a patron show, Jerry, or I might do that as a YouTube review show just to do something different. Speaking of YouTube, make sure you head over to YouTube, Dynasty Warzone, and subscribe with notifications turned on somewhere between now and the weekend. I'm going to do my second 10-minute mock draft with Memphis. This time I'll do a super flex so that ADP isn't quite as uh, trash over at Sleeper. But speaking of trash, Jerry is never going to be that. He is the man of the hour. He is the man with the power. Jerry, let's take this one in. So on behalf of that man, his name is Jerry. My name is Memphis. And remember, here at the Dynasty War Zone, we are just trying to make the world a better place for fantasy football. We'll see you back here actually tomorrow. Me and Dr. Kyle are going to do a little big bet. And then we'll see you back here next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.